Greetings and salutations, ladies and men folk. Welcome to another episode of Game Break, a full coverage writer's endeavor where me and my crew take a bit of time away from our creative endeavors and enjoy some other people's creations, primarily in video game format. I am Charles coming to you today with another episode of Dysfunctional Systems. Now, last time round, Winter and Cyrus had survived their experiences on Sewell with the whole nuclear shenanigans between Brighton and Gabriel. And we were left off with Winter going to sleep, still sick from radiation poisoning, but looking forward to a fun-filled day of debriefing to follow. So, let's roll back into this and see just where we go from here. Now, if I remember correctly, this left us off as Waverly, her roommate. I need to do something, right? I should do something. The doctor. Nurse? The whatever she was yesterday told me to make sure that Winter ate breakfast and drank liquids. I'm not living up to that responsibility. It's already past 12 and she's still sleeping. You let her sleep past noon, so she's already missed breakfast. She potentially could miss lunch. That's not good for a normal person, never mind someone who has radiation sickness. And is probably dehydrated and malnourished now. Put the book down and get your roommate fed. Then I should wake her up, right? Yes. Yes, you should, Waverly. Gwuh. I don't know. First off, that's really weird. I hardly know her. Secondly, just watching her in bed feels... Mm, sketchy. Um. What? Uh... How is waking up a roommate weird? I mean, yeah, okay, if you've only been roommates for a short while, it could be a little awkward, but... What? She's curled up in there, looking uncomfortable. I just can't. Frankly, it's cute. Frankly, just having that opinion makes me feel scummy. Um... Okay. Um, uh, whatever. It's probably best if she wakes on her own. Then again, she's been shivering. She could have a fever. I glance over at her from my desk. Man, I have to check. What is this, 14 hours rest? Yeah, when someone slept for 14 hours straight after being radiated, you might want to check on them. I set my book face down with Karen Rise, tiptoeing over to her bedside. She's so small and pathetic, really. She reminds me of this one kid we had back home, a runt. It feels like anything that happens to her is too much. She shivers again, and I have some ideas to warm her up, and that would likely make our relationship even more awkward. Um, I know that teenagers are more than well aware of such things, but winter is 14, presumably you are near the same age, and I've experienced enough visual novels to be concerned. Can we please keep this PG? Well, I, I need to at least touch her forehead to make sure she's alright. Or is not, I guess. Just the forehead. It's actually a bit cool. She sweat out a lot during the night, looks like. So I imagine any fever she's had is gone now. Mm. I pull back my hand. While she's readjusting, I retreat to my desk and pretend to be reading. 
Mm. I hear her sit up and I flinch a bit in spite of myself. M morning. Is it really? I look over my shoulder to find her rubbing her face and turning to the window. She grumbles and puts a palm over one of her eyes. How are you feeling? Not much. Uh... I mean, I don't feel much of anything. Could be because of... in the medicine. She nods just a little. You seem better. I guess. She abruptly flops down onto our mattress after a small silence. I turn back to face my book. It's actually past noon, by the way. I figured. You'll have to settle for lunch instead of breakfast. I consider apologizing, but restrain myself. I wonder if she even wants to eat. I'm guessing no, if that doctor was so insistent that she do. Are you going back to sleep? I look over my shoulder again. Winter? Out like a light. Great. I'll just have to steal myself later and just shake her awake, I guess. I get back to the novel in my hand. Ooh, this is getting intense. I got this book from the World's Library. It's called a crime of romance novel, or whatever. It's, uh, not strange to be interested in weird literature, is it? Well, no. Perfectly alright. I don't think so, at least. I mean, come on. It's perfectly normal to be interested in unusual things. You just can't read this sort of thing from any earthen source. Nothing this terrible exists. Tch. Great. Just now, I was starting to enjoy this. I close the book and put it down, though I don't get up to answer the door. If someone important, like the doctor, then she'll say something. Anyone else would either tarry for a bit or keep knocking till they're answered. Oh man, what is this? I've got a feeling. I sigh. I stand from my chair and I stretch a bit. Stop knocking! That's... that would get really annoying. Only then do I step over and open the door. Irie? Who the frell is Irie? V! You've got your nose in some body works again. Reading some pornography again. Answer the door quick, yeah? This is the worst possible visitor. It's like the brightest star has descended right here in the hallway. She's all smiles. I don't need this right now. I don't read pornography, Irie. Cackle, I really don't want to hear your vile accent right now. She puts on a pretend expression of hurt. You'll insult me at the door? Won't even bloody well invite me in? That's the k that's a kind of behavior befitting lesser people, V, not you. I stare at her. V, you've got to be honest. I know you delay in entertaining guests for thine own fancy, but you've got to admit to it one day. Huh? Admit to it? To what? V, listen. She grabs my shoulders and looks me in the eyes, through her ridiculous transparent colored shades. Listen to me. If you're not honest, you'll rot. Rot? Yeah, rot. Hard T. Say. Swinny in. She could at least remove her hands from my person before she asks for another. You came to see Winter? Her grin returns in its full obnoxious glory. <laughs> yeah, I heard she's fucked up massively. I wish I'd been there to see it, her face flush with tears. You want to make fun of her? She laughs again, shaking a bit. <laughs> You're killing me here, V. V, sweet V, chaos had made its fun out of 
fun at her already. What more could I do? This is really awkward to read. She nuked an entire system, man. How do you even do that? You are an ass. Can't you even for a second attempt to resemble a decent human being? V, I just said I'm not here to make fun. I just want to see her. Mayhaps give her gaunt little cheeks a poke or two. She's not gaunt. Her smile vanishes. I, you're right, V. Earth eyes. Her smile returns. What does she do to fill those thighs, V? Has she let you give him a squeeze yet? These are teenagers. This feels weird. Y yet She is a mess of a girl. Oddly and looks a girl, but those legs. Who gave her the idea to wear the stockings of hers? Goodness. You sound like a lesbian. Wow. The I'm just admiring another beautiful woman. As a beautiful woman myself, nothing lazy about that. Fair enough. Still, teenagers, can we move on? Her lips twist a little. She looks right into my eyes. Uh, not the type of moving on I said or wanted. Tell me. Who here would think of another girl with lustful eyes? Who's the man, Waverly? Ah, but I digress. Winnie could stand to be much more beautiful, eh? Right? Wait, are you insulting her? Get your bloody hands off me already. She does so. So can I come in now? No. Why on earth not? You're, <coughs> You're a bastard, Irie. Oi! She points at me. Let's be a bit more subtle, air, right? Let's keep it fun. Fun, she says. And A. Hey, I should be allowed in. Winnie's my best friend. She is not. By what authority dost thou make such bold claims? By common sense, ye idiot. Or ye clod. She giggles. Ye. Girl did not even begin to talk mess about my Northwesterners. Aw, oh, we're switching acts. Ugh, this is getting weird. Girl, do not even begin to talk mess about my Northwesterners voice. Like listening to a breeze, and you're like listening to a cat being drawn and quartered. Oh, shit! Why did I mention that? <sighs> I reflexively cover my mouth, as if I can grab back what I've just said before I can reach her ears and swallow it back. Her ears perk up. She blinks. Drawn and quartered. What's that? I refuse to answer. Is that... Is it a kind of torture? I watch in repulsion as she quietly lifts her thumb to her mouth and gently bite, bites the nail. Nibbling, she sways the rest of her hand in slow motion. She gives me the slightest smile. Been reading some interesting stuff from the libraries, eh? Old waves. What's the book? Forget it. Tease. I'll find it, her faith. She leans into the door, smirking. She crosses her arms and visibly relaxes. Okay, love. I want you to know I'm loving this inn. I love it dearly, her faith. But I do want to see Winnie. Mercy, this girl is persistent. Didn't I say no? Then can you tell her that I feel bad for her? Do I look like the type to spread lies? Ouch. Tell her I want to see her. What for? Because I told you to. No, I mean, why do you want to see her? 
She shrugs. Because it's spi it spills like that would build character V, and I'm a scholar for character study. Grinning again, she adds. Though I admit I was interested in her before, before, because she's like a little animal, and don't you want to grab such a thing and just eat them? Um. Okay. You're coming on too strong. It's suffocating. Teenager hers. Me? Me? She stares at me, her hands over her chest in mock disbelief. Eventually, she starts to smile. Cackle, I wish she'd just go away. She drops her hands. Ha, it's too bad for me, you're such a powerful gatekeeper. I can't even catch, catch a glimpse of the grey little one from here. I guess I'll be seeing you then, V. Let's hope not. I think a teacher was going to come round to this room a bit later. Which... I'd tell you if I knew, lovely. Good luck and peace. That was an experience. She finally departs. Right. I return to my desk in a foul mood. I don't even want to pick this book back up. Waverly, who was that just now? I put my arms up on my desk and slouch, resting my cheek in my hand. Irie. Irie? Yeah. She, she wanted to talk to me? Well, no, probably not. Ah. Uh, she did want to see you, though. She wanted to... I pause. Well, we all know Irie by now, don't we? I heard some kind of ragged, pulsing breath, which I take for Winter's laugh. We do. She's a character. I flip my book back open and begin once more from where I left off. I don't want to bother having her around. I don't want to bother hearing her around. The noise from before repeats with some of a something of a greater intensity, leading to coughing. I sigh. I'm sorry, Winter. I'm too amusing for sick people, I guess. You're ridiculous. I'm too wonderful, amazing, astounding. Stop that. I should have chosen to go to a comedy school. You'd get laughed off the stage in a bad way. Ye laugh at my jokes and go on to say that. Ah, I shouldn't bother helping you out any more. More ridiculousness. No, I command you. I command you to open the windows. It's hot. Winter? It's the middle of winter. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, yeah, I'm with you, Winter. I do suppose the thermostat's rather high. I start getting up. And there is my smoldering attractiveness to consider. So stifling. Winter hack laughs again as I go to complete her task. There's something special. There's something special to be said about people who cause laughter with intent to breed suffering. Oh, what's that? I open the first window. Wait, let me try to be clever. Opening the second, I begin to return to my seat. It's better to be clever when you're... Oh, it's... It's better to be clever when you're quick on the take, Winter. Oh, yes, I was certain I had something there. You've ever gotten the feeling that there's something smart to be said? If only you could figure out what it was. That's what happened. I sit down, looking over at her. How slow are you? I feel like chilled molasses, except warm. Very slow. By the way, a teacher should be coming around. Which? If I knew that, I'd tell you, lovely. <laughs> I should stop that. I already regret saying it once. I, I can hardly believe she comes from the same continent as I do. 
Why are you saying that out loud in that way? The Centerlands are huge. You'd best believe it. Plus, I'm pretty sure she's somewhat southwestern with a name like that. Do you all sound the same? Do you all sound the same in the Northwest? Yes, Winter. All seventy million of us talk exactly like me. Sorry, it's just a lot smaller. I smile. Well, honestly, the regional differences are nothing compared to the differences between the Westerners here and you middle folk. At least our worst dialect is still understandable. Understandable? I can understand Irie just fine, actually. I let out an exaggerated groan. Please, I don't need any more talk like that in my life. I just understand it, that's all. I didn't say I'd, that I'd reproduce it. I laugh a bit. She seems to have gotten more energetic, even if she is still lying in bed. It's good we're friendly, even if I do hesitate to take care of her. Having a poor roommate sounds like the worst. Went to Harrison's place. Coming! As I, as I get up, I smile at Winter. Bet on who it is. I don't know all their voices yet. Think it's our combat instructor? Souther is an ancient winter. It sounds more like Henry. She pulls the covers up over her face a bit in a small show of embarrassment. Adorable, but enough dallying. Hello, Mr. Penn. I was right. Good day, Waverly. How are you? Fine, sir. Ah, oh, Waverly's here. Hmm? Isn't that... Waverly, it's been weeks since last I saw you. A bitter few weeks. So you've been fine, eh? Ah, uh, yes, sir. My first mentor? What's he doing here with Henry? You know, seeing them bite side by side, they really dress alike. Very stylish and very sharp. You mentored this child? Can you believe it? They gave me the simplest jobs only because I'm so young. There are plenty reasons for it, Walter. Plenty of bullshit. I've done measures better than... Than... Eh, what was it we did, Waverly? Ah, uh, I totally forgot. It was so boring. Our first mediations were apparently supposed to be really easy and unfortunately very tame. Long term, no danger. I think it had something to do with earth? Like moving dirt? It was incredibly stupid. I think it was construction issues. I stand corrected. There's nothing that can top that, Henry. Playing in mud, right? That's totally the pinnacle. Don't be a smart ass, Walter. Walter is one of the more bizarre things I've encountered since becoming a mediator, and he's from Earth. I can't exactly peg him down at all. He's the only thing I remember clearly about my first mediation. Oh wait, Walter's the one in the accent, Henry's not. Try and remember. I know, I know. Anyway, we didn't come here to pester my protege, Winter Harrison, right? That's right. Is she in, Waverly? Y yeah, but... Don't worry. We don't need to go get her. I just wanted you to relay some things. Harrison. Harrison. Was that Cyrus's girl? Yes, from the... From the dead world. You here for the girl who went through that? Yes. Walter puts on a strange, somewhat negative expression and places a hand on his hip. Pursing his lips, he looks at me and then passed me into the room. I just kind of avoid his eyes. Don't know what Cyrus is doing. His report was nonsense. Walter. Nonsense, Henry. His explanation, what went down, it's horse shit. I don't want to hear it. How did he manage to fuck things up so massively? There are simple checks to go through. I know he's all about just getting it over with, but... They were children's mistakes, and he ruined a child for them. I'm going to need to talk with him later. Will you come? He doesn't listen to anything I say. If you don't persist with numbskulls, they'll, they never will. 
Even though he's a top tier mediator, I don't think I've ever heard any other mediators go along without talking mess about Cyrus. I'm a little pissed off with him, too, not that I know entirely what went down. The death of an entire world. I wonder what they'll say about it when we next have class. I wonder how many other students will know about it. There are so many worlds, though, so many planes. Maybe they won't bother. Maybe one. what's one more lost? I don't know what I'm thinking. While I'm musing over my cruelly dismissive thoughts, a white square of paper moves into my eyesight. Looking up, I see that it's a letter being held by Henry. Give this to Mistress Harrison, would you? I take it. On the front it reads, For whenever it's too much to bear, read this. Henry Penn. Tell her I expect a meeting to expect a meeting with me later, as well. I nod. Glancing briefly inside, Henry bends to my ear and speaks in a whisper. Presently, I won't offer my condolences or words for her, as it would be rude of me to assume her state. I'd prefer to talk to her directly, you see. He puts a hand on my shoulder. If this has affected you, as it very likely might have, you know where my office is. He straightens up and looks at his watch. I rotate my shoulder a little. It's winter, right? I nod. Yes. Make sure winter thinks about what happened. Everything that happened. This isn't something to run away from. I nod slowly. The same goes for you, Mr. Sire. He pokes, he pokes my nose at the tip and I wiggle it in irritation. What is it with these men and touching? Walter smirks at me. Weirdo. Let's get going, Walter. All right. Henry nods with his departure. Walter smiles and waves. I close the door. I stretch out again and look at Penn's letter. Who was it? My first mentor and... I look over at her, and Henry, he wrote you a letter. I draw attention to said letter by raising it a bit and flapping it lightly. Your first mentor? Walter Les, Len, something Western. Moving to her bedside, I hand her the letter. I don't think you should read it yet. Winter looks it over and gives it a light shake. She frowns. Me neither. I hesitantly allow myself to smile. That's good, right? It's for when things become too much to bear. I wiggle my fingers with joking emphasis. Yeah. Resting the letter on her bed, she goes quiet. You need to eat, girl. About fucking time you realize this. She grimaces at me. Do I really? Yes. Now come on. I reach down and she grudgingly extends her arms, embracing me around the back of my neck. I pick her up in my arms. What is this? I don't want to walk. You need to walk. I only picked you up since you didn't put your feet on the floor when I moved in. I'm really just lethargic. I don't want to move around at all. And I have this wicked cough. You can stand, can't ye? I'm not kidding. I'm just at least to the door. That, that's embarrassing. It's totally embarrassing. I don't want to be seen like this. Please, Waverly. Cackle, no. You've been lying in bed long enough. Down you go. I begin to lower her, and she moans in complaint. Man, this girl is too light. Feels like I'm barely holding anything. After whining a bit more, she relinquishes and carefully stands. I help her to the door and pause to let her stretch her legs a little. Are ye good? She's quivering and everything. I, I think I'm fine. Let's get going. Come on, I'll hold on to you at least. Thanks. I need that, I think. All right, onwards to breakfast, lunch, and 
I don't know, I guess the debriefing isn't happening. Um, save. Uh, yeah. So my initial recording crack, like just imploded. So this is actually the end of Dysfunctional Systems, episode one, learning to manage chaos. This is where it leaves you. I really wish that my initial reaction was recorded because doing this again, seeing it coming, you know, it's actually not any better, even after seeing it coming. Um, the first part on Sewell being a mediator, that was fantastic. It was really nicely done. The interplay between the characters was great. The art style was fantastic. And the art style stayed consistent throughout. I love the art style. And I love the soundtrack. Bonus points to the soundtrack really nicely done the characters winter up until this part i thought was really well well she didn't really do much in this one so that's not fair to say winter was really well done i liked that character i felt it was pretty fleshed out there was a bit of story arc or character arc for her I'm curious what the interplay between her and other students are, though. We never really got to see that, and I want to see more of that, because her interplay with Irie and Waverly, there's got to be something there. There's story there, which presumably would be covered in Episode 2 of Dysfunctional Systems, but this was a Kickstarter game, from what I've read, and there's no current plans to continue the series unfortunately so this may be all we get which is a little frustrating because there's so many good things about this game that i really liked and i'm probably going to play through again choosing some of the different choices to see how that spins out i mean maybe we don't blow up a planet that would be nice but you know no guarantees but yeah, if you're into visual novels with minimal characters, I mean, there are probably a half dozen overall, really. This probably would take two hours, maybe three, if you go through a couple choices or you take your time. It only took me so long because, one, I was reading everything out loud, and two, it kept crashing on me, so I had to do it over several times. But really, just from straight beginning to end, maybe two, two and a half hours, say. I had a lot of fun with this. I really enjoyed it, and now I'm going to have to think about what the next visual novel is going to be that I'm going to do. Because these are fun. This is a nice little distraction and entertainment for me when I'm not writing or arting or doing other creative endeavors. Well... With that, I hope you had fun with me as I went through dysfunctional systems. But now it is time to shut this down and get back to being creative already.